and after that, the auto the jail, they called me to court, summoned me to court, and it was a showcase, uh, a show court. Uh, all the soldiers were there and showed them how they treated the fellow who wouldn't, wouldn't go to combat training. And the best in, in uh, our barracks were about 600 men, and they stayed, stayed without meal, without dinner, because the court took so long. Mm. Because it was very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> they were very dangerous because you wouldn't go to combat training. Eh? Yeah. It's very dangerous. What, what kind of things did they say in court? What, what, when they were talking about the charges against you, what did they say? What did the uh, prosecutor say? Well, they said, I don't want to protect the Red Army, the Communist Party. In case the enemy was home, I would go over the other side. I would meet. Traitor? Faithful to the Red Army. They didn't trust me. And it, and they were the big verdict, three of them were fine, and, and three, three months, three months, three, three years, three. Three years, jail. Yeah. Yes. Plus, plus 300 rubles. Yes. And when I came to jail to, to, be, to stay there, there was, there was an old father in office, a Jew. And he said, but for you, and I guess I looked him, not as dangerous as they. <laughs> as they said you were. <laughs> yeah. So, before anyone met him, he said, have you, have you a chance to appeal? Yes. Well, I appeal for you. You sign it. I make him make an appeal out, and you sign it, and we send it after the Muslim. And that's what we did. Hmm. So you appealed the sentence then? Yes. And from Moscow, they wrote back, they should give me a fair trial and give me a just, just verdict. Mm. And then I came, and says, came back. Yeah. Then I came back and. So you had another trial? Yes. Yeah, it was this. <laughs> I was the first time was four, years, four months in jail. Before you had a trial? No. I had a trial in the beginning, but after, after four months I had the second trial. Second trial. And uh, did you. Had you paid the fine then already? No, I have not paid the fine. Yeah. Did you have any money? Could you have paid the fine? No, no my dad, my dad is with people that I didn't ask for. Mm -hmm. So after four months you had another trial. Did yes. they say the same things? No. It was worse. Three and a half years and three and a half, three and a half, hundred rubles paid fine. Three and a half years the second time. And uh, that uh, you, you said, that, are you again here? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's, it's worse this time. It was the first time. But he said, that's, uh, that's fine. That's good for good. But so, so he appeared the second time for me, and I said, it, and it took two months to, 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 to come back. And that gave, gave, gave me a half year jail. But they, they in Moscow, did you didn't yes. have another trial? Yes. So you, you were saying from, from us the second time they were back from Moscow. They we take this case out from the martial law court. And we transferred the court to a public court. Oh. And it was all together. And then I came to a public court and a few 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 few, few days I live I live in there's believers in town. Mm -hmm. And then I came to court to the public court. They asked me, what do you want? And if, if I had said I want to go home, they would have let me go. Mm. But I said I want to serve like we like, are like in the old army. I would like to work in the hospital. And it took me maybe not five minutes and they got a bit big thing. I am free from the, from the martial court and they, I could serve in the hospital. So you spent six months in jail? And, uh, yes, six months in jail, six, eighteen months in, in the army. Mm -hmm. That gives two years. Right. Did the, uh, how were you treated while you were in jail? Was the treatment? Jail as well as the criminals. Right? Jail as well as the criminals. But it was a small jail. Almost two, uh, two soldiers left if you had to go outside. Mm -hmm. you know. 
But you weren't you weren't mistreated or tortured while you were in jail. What's that? You weren't tortured or mistreated mm -hmm. in jail. No. You did tell me earlier about how you was on a you all slept on the floor? No, you didn't. What what was the jail like? Well it was a stone stone a stone building. And, and, and on one side of that I was about two feet two feet from the floor, but it was all occupied and all over and full of lies and bed bugs. Mm. So I had no room in there. So I had to sleep on the floor. On a cement floor? No, a wood floor. Wood floor. What what time of year was this? Winter. Was it cold in the jail? No. But sometimes you could, if you felt like you could squeeze the dirt in the air to get in the of the room. Very stuffy. Eh? Mm -hmm. When when had you what what month was it that you went into the army? What month what month did you go into it's jail? in September. You went into the army? Yeah. And then you went I went to, 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 to jail in November or, or, or October or something. But it was just shortly after you'd been in the army that you went. Yes. And there was a, a young Russian from Krushnovsky. He needed to come back training too. And he had to go to jail too. And we slept close together. Mm -hmm. And there was, a, there was somebody who uh, he always prayed in his corner. And then... You yeah, have many boys, communist or not. If he didn't clean his rifle, or he didn't clean his house or the saddle, he cut the jail about uh, 50 for days. Mm. If he had a little leave to go in town and leave and then come back and back, come, come time and back, come back in time, then he had to go to jail for three, four days. Mm. And the vet went seven in one room. Mm. And after every room. And they, the one, one day they, they asked the, the jailmaster, we want to see the prosecutor. And one day the prosecutor came to jail and walked in the room and the jailer locked the door behind him and he felt that. The other voice, the voice, surrounded him because it was nice to knock him down there. But I sure felt that. And the voice said, why are you always the heart and court? And, and put us in jail for, for a little. If he come a few minutes late, he put him in jail. Then he said, okay, boys, I'm going to say a good word for you, so you come, come out again. But those two, the Russian brother and me, those two, they shall not here. They shall not here in jail. He pointed at me. Mm. Were, you, were you in the same cell as? Yes. Yeah, All 27 in this room, yes. including you guys. Yes. Yes, that Russian, he was a uh, believer too, yeah? Was it? Oh, yes. He was a said, those two But they didn't beat up the prosecutor, did they? They just, they just surrounded the prosecutor. They didn't beat up the prosecutor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he was glad to get out there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was, he was glad. And he they said a good word for the rest of the boys, so they came out again too. So then all of a sudden they all went out? Did they all leave then? Oh yeah, bye, bye. But there came new ones in. There was a communist and he, he, he had many girls. This is the bottom. And he was there too? He kissed, he kissed the girls who said the woman dropped them. And he was at Unji and he was proud that he had, he had had too many girls. And he was a poor fellow, a real communist. And I had, I had something to write home. I had to do paper. And I had to buy the journalist, sing book, and I learned some songs. And I had a Bible. And he was a real communist. We, one day he was released from jail, so all the rest of the jailbirds cut out in line and, uh, and shake hands with him. And he walked him all around, and I think, I thought he wouldn't, 
he was almost a harsh to me. And I didn't get up, I just lay there, I stayed on my couch or whatever it was. I didn't get up and then he walked up to me and gave me a kiss for proof of by saying, I didn't expect it. Yeah. So you, uh, you felt that you, you'd been a witness while you'd been in jail then? Yes, I tried to. And they always treated me nice when they knelt down and did my, even, my evening prayer. They always respected it. Even this fellow. And when the six months were over in jail, I came out and again in the army. I was, I was transferred to a different part of the, of the army. Mm -hmm. I was touched to the suppers. To the where? To the suppers. To the telephone part. Mm. Is it a different town or is it a different No. Area? Just the different barrack. And then I went to the hospital and they supplied in my uniform from the, from the suppers. I had nothing to do with the suppers where I was before. And, and they put me uh, then again the bar my barrack and over about seventeen months to do this possible. I'll come with the okay. But my, my bad they put in a uh uh cut loose my case. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yes, cut there was a, a corner where they said that's the They have nothing every club, they have a corner they call it Bersborzik. The that means... Uh, God, Godless. Godless. Co -co like, uh, the anti, anti religion corner. Mm -hmm. Like the that, that, that they wanted me to sleep. And he I had to sleep in that the corner. The boys, like I guess, had to sleep. <laughs> to sleep in that corner. Was it just a, was it just a nickname for the corner? Or? No, no. They had... Uh, usually uh, Lenin was hanging there now. A, a picture of Lenin, maybe some... Yeah. Oh, those okay. you know, the, that was the oh, I see. That was their anti-religion corner, and they yeah. would put all their mm -hmm. all the, the different leaders. banners and leaders and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and some terrible pictures of God, and maybe of Jesus, more mocking pictures. Mm -hmm. They mocked it. What kind of pictures would they be? What what would what would the pictures show? What would these mocking pictures show? I I don't remember. I didn't pay attention. But I was surprised the boys all then respected and knelt down and prayed every evening. So every evening you, you prayed in the anti-religion corner then? Yes. Mm -hmm. It was really something, huh? Yeah? And the, then he had to look after the sick on the other end. I was in charge of the whole hospital. All the linen and all the bedding, everything what they had there. Hmm. And one day, when the one young communist came to the hospital, he was on the first or second time when, when I was judge, and he had to say something too, because he was a good communist, and he condemned me too. And when he came to the hospital, I recognized him by the way, because I had to cut his hair and gave him, gave him the hospital. Gowns? Gowns, yeah. Did he recognize you? Oh, yes. Did he say anything to you? Not to me, but to, to the other orderless in the hospital. He, 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 he asked the other, the other, the other uh, what the temple said when I came in. He, he said, he said nothing. He said, he, he thinks he has everybody else. But if, if you want a Christian, if you want to be a Christian, he had to. See, he was so bad when he was, you know, when, when the... Uh, and court. Court was on. Mm. This young communist was speaking against him so much. Now he was sick and came to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Now they didn't do and this looked after him like he was. Oh yes, I gave him a pass and and burst him and clean clean pajama and shoot whatever it was and, and brought him in the hospital and, and gave him a bed and told the boy should look after him. Yeah, then then he was wondering what he said about him. He said nothing. Mm. I treat him the same as all the others, it's anybody. Mm. Yeah, I, I had to make a fire to warm the water up 
उनके पास So you did that for eight, 18 months. You were in yes. And one afternoon, I was sitting at the table in the office. We had, I had, I had the table and chair in the little office there. And I was sitting. I don't know what I was doing, but somebody, somebody touched me. Can I show you? And who was it? Thomas.
just inside or was it inside, inside. I mean outside too? No. 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 Was some, but she found comfort and then I think it is in current and said it was the first or second. Uh, but we, if we do it too much, then I do it to, to the Lord. Were, well, was there was there a conference church and a brethren church oh, yes. and sat side by side in that village? Yes, and almost in all the villages, in the Mennonite villages. There were two churches? Yes. Both denominations? Yeah. But there was quite a difference. In those days, the conference church, they were drinking and dancing, if possible, and smoking. But now it's different. To me, it looks like the men of the church, they, they backed up it, and the conventions kept going ahead. Like, no, I can have a fellowship as a conference too. But in those days, it was impossible because even was born again. Did you have friends that were in the conference church? No, I didn't have friends in the conference church. But the other relatives were. Yeah. Was, yes. it, was it hard on the relatives to, to see you go over to the Mennonite mm. Brethren Church? They didn't care? No, no. My brothers and sisters didn't care much. They always thought I was happy and I was a child of God and the parents were glad that I had the courage. When, when did your parents get baptized? In Canada or in Russia? I think in, in, in Russia. They got baptized, I think it was in 24 or 25. Mm. Quite a few years later then? Yes. For the same reasons that, that they... Well, they got converted and they went to, to join the church. What was this Mr. Taves? He preached so much all over, yeah? Yes. Over the other preachers. Yeah, we had an uh, house too. Yeah. yeah. Conducted Bible studies and Bible courses. So after you were out of the hospital, how, how did your discharge happen before you went to Leningrad? How were you discharged? As they asked him. He just got two years. You just had to serve for two years and then yes. you were allowed. And they gave you an honorable discharge. An honorable discharge. Honor. So then you went to Leningrad to the to the Bible school there? Yes. Well, the doctors liked me in the hospital. Mm. I had everything through and, and they looked out after everything like he's, he's, Yes, yes, please. That's it. Like he was a finisher. Oh, <laughs> and when did uh, you were talking about being visited by Jesus? When did that hap that happen while you were at the hospital, right? Yes. When he and how had you been there? What what uh, what when when did that occur? Do you remember when that happened? What year it was and what month? This must have been twenty six. The same year as it was in the discharge from the screen. And about what month would that have been? Do you remember the month at all? No. But it was just shortly after you got discharged from jail? Yeah. He has a diary. Mm. Yeah, I had a book in jail. And uh, many drafts of the plan of salvation. You know, the plan of salvation, I'm such a big piece of paper. We have it upstairs, yes. Mm. And the girls were so excited when I showed it with your mom. They cleaned up up there and they found it. Mm. And then we told them that was the one he made in jail. Mm. The plan of salvation. And uh, of course, the Russian, the, the, the non-stat. But of course, I was so. <laughs> and they let they let you keep it though, eh? They let you, they let you keep the drawing and everything. Yeah, took a while. Um, and and that you also kept the diary as well. What's that? You also kept kept the diary. Yes. 
Yes, I, I have two diaries. Yeah, did you keep them in, in jail there too, the diary? Did you write down, or was it after the, after you were discharged from the... From the diary, yeah. Then you, then you started to, yes. to, to write. I think it's mm -hmm. not from the jail. No, how, how far back, did that diary cover a lot of different areas, or? I don't know. Uh, how far away, uh, when did you start writing? I think it in, in spring twenty seven. Did you did you keep the diary up right until you left Russia? Did you Yes. I guess it's all in Russian, isn't it? German. German? Mm -hmm. But it's more and more experience in spiritual life. Mm. I fellowship with Lawrence. Doesn't doesn't go so much into the everyday experiences that you were having during the time. Mm -hmm. It's more spiritual. Yes. Not what you had for for breakfast or the first supper. <laughs> Nothing like that. <laughs> so the and you spent one year in, in Leningrad. One winter. One winter. Yeah. I think from October till March. And was it during that time that you were that you had applied for visas to get out or passport? No, it was in 2009 in spring. I was discharged from the Bible school, and in November I left us. Because all the teachers, that the school was was closed. Yeah, they did one day. One day when we were in Bible school, and listened to the lecture. In March. And he had uh, repentance. He talked talk. about the repentance. The doc, the, the and suddenly we students noticed that the communists came in and sat behind us on the bench. It was not a, a real Bible school, it was a church. And get church pews. And we sat down. And I wondered what the lecture would say now, what they would do with the truth or what. But he continued. This one was in the show. He continued, and when he was doing it, he came down from, from the pulpit and walked in the aisle up to the communist and he said hello to him. And he said, have you, have you understood everything? And that's exactly what you said. <laughs> What's the news? That's exactly what you mean. And then there was some big brothers here. They all came from Siberia. It was big ones. They came in and, 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 and uh, surrounded, him. surrounded the, the lecturer and the communists and they sang gospel songs. And they, the communists took up the, the big brothers, they could knock them down. They were like, and they yeah, surrounded them. Mm -hmm. He left. And they sang, sang gospel songs. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the minister said to him, this is what you need. He talked about okay. his hands. And then they put him mm. But he had to report to the communists what he saw. And next day the school was closed and mm. the teachers arrested and all the students had to go home. Mm. Then tears were running down on his cheeks. They have assaulted mm. So it's cool for them. They have to work sometimes. Mm -hmm. I it's their own conscience. But those fellows have many times beaten up to suffer for Christ. Mm -hmm. When when in the evening in the, in the dormitory when we undressed for the night, I could see the many scars on arms and the chest. So that was that was how the school got closed down, eh? Yes. And the, most of them went to jail, but this one here, he died just two years ago in Moscow. He mm -hmm. was the head of the of the Moscow. This was young fellow. He he could sing wonderful. 
and he revised all the Russian songs, the song books that he used, he was having church. Yeah, and I did that, he did a lot of, he did, did songs. And in 57, he was, was in, in, in Seattle. I love you. It's yeah, usually. Yeah. I can see you. Mm-hmm. Can he you did that, Seattle, and I, I asked him, what happened to this brother? To Kazako. And then he said, he's not a, a Mongol also anymore. He didn't, didn't give me a, a proper answer. answer. But uh, these two, and this one, they were in, in Seattle. Hmm. And 1956, yeah? Yes, 56, 57. Yeah. So we took this picture along and went to, to Seattle. Prove it oh. To prove it. I was with us. And they recognized me. I was a year later there, in, this, in the same church, sang in the choir there. Hmm. And then yeah, I moved a year sooner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, year sooner. That's right. And uh, so this one said, "I recognize you." He said, but they didn't recognize too much him. But then they knew. Hmm. And then one of the brethren said, "Why don't you come to Russia? We need their workers." And then well, they they use a different building when you come to your homeland. I said, I found here a homeland, and I feel good here. Mm-hmm. And then they asked the second time, when you come to our home, homeland, I said, I have here a homeland. Mm-hmm. You know, they couldn't speak too much. They were, I think they had somebody around. Well, well, when they come in a bunch, three or four, and they control each other, the same as we are not an empty sea there. You know, they clear up. Same thing. Yeah, there's always... What they say is true, but they didn't, they didn't see the other side. They just show you one side. So, so they just, but they're, as far as you know, they were still in the Mennonite Brethren Church? No, that was the Evangelical. They called themselves the Evangelical Church. These are all Russians. No, later on. This one is a German one. And this one. And this one. This is a Giesbrecht. Mm, the three, three, three students with men of the yeah. Three Mennonites. Mm. And the, this young, young fellow here, the young, young brother from Leningrad. And this one, this one here, I think he's from Sakhalin, close to your home. Mm. But, uh, in, uh, 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 I'm at Sakhalin. But then you have to show color. Very nice brother. I had fellowship with all of them. Mm-hmm. All right. I uh, I think we covered most of the areas because we yes. we talked about your escape the last time. Um, you described it. Has uh, this kind of a classical what was it disappeared a bit. The communists they figured they were very smart, they could always prove that there's no God. And this fellow he could show them that there is a God without taking the Bible. Mm-hmm. Scientific. And they, they hated when they called us the debate, the when he came to the debate. And I guess that's the reason why he disappeared. Well did did you have debates while you were at school no. there? I never did that at the, 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 the debate. But while you were at school, he went into debates? With the communists. Yes. Yes, the yeah. Russian, they figured they were very smart and they could prove it that there's no God. And they, 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 they appointed a certain time when they were going to have debate and invited all the people. But when this fellow came, they didn't do it. He wasn't really smart. He was smart. And he had finished the concert, the conservatory. In, the, you know the mm-hmm. music conservatory? He could sing bass. I never have heard such a bass. Mm. And his wife sang alto. Beautiful alto. We sang in, the, in that choir, 80 people, mm. and uh, we had a, a symphony orchestra, about 40 musicians, 
So it was 120 Muslims all together. And the, a professor from the, from the conservatory came to practice with us. Mm -hmm. And there were eight people sitting in front, all solo singers. Mm -hmm. They all finished the conservatory. You know, the, the solo mm -hmm. singers. Two sopranos, two officers. And, the, and we sang that but for Easter, that song. Uh, uh, My sister isn't. No, Smirt uh, Irizi, it's in Russian. Is it in Death and Life? Dead and Life, yeah. And it was for three hours mm -hmm. in oratorio. It was just beautiful. And this, this was a, like an old Russian church mm -hmm. with a high, how do you call it? A high tone? Dome, mm -hmm. you know. Wonderful well, acoustic. Mm -hmm. Right. And the, the choir was sitting in the back on a balcony. There were balconies all around, mm -hmm. from three sides. And the, this is where the choir was sitting. And it shook under, uh, you know, the floors mm. was shaking. And this Kazakov, he was a bass. Mm. Oh, he could sing this beautiful. And it was really an experience. Mm. This is really juice. Do you want some of this? Right. Do you want some? No, thank you. I have to chew. I can't drink too much. It's too good for me. Yeah, you want it. It's too good. Okay, we can.